This is Theo, and you're listening to Between Two Trains, a bi-monthly business podcast where we interview the best and brightest entrepreneurs in the North Cap area. Today, your co-hosts are Van Pappas of Oxygen Financial and Jason Wheelock of Compass Realty. And now, Between Two Trains. All right, welcome back to Between Two Trains. We have a fabulous episode. Uh, we're going to have a guest from Carrie's Bridal come on in the show in a second. But uh, as always, I have sitting next to me my co-host, Jason Wheelock. Jason, welcome to the show. Hey, Van. Now, now Jason, did I hear Theo in the introduction correctly? I thought he yeah. said you were with Compass. What, what's yeah, going on there? He's not crazy. So it's been... Um, quite a long journey. Uh, as you and a number of the listeners know, uh, my team, the Wheelock Group, has been with Keller Williams for many years. And um, we finally, this week, uh, have opened a new exciting brokerage in Atlanta called Compass. And um, we are a founding team with them. So it's an opportunity to help build a brokerage from the ground up, uh, as well as to continue to do business as usual. And so... It's it's exciting. That's awesome, yeah. man. That's really great. Uh, I'm excited for you, and we'll talk more about that in the coming episodes of Between Two Trains. Uh, we welcome you to listen to this show and all shows on various podcasting uh, locations. We're on iTunes and uh, Google Play and wherever you listen to your favorite podcast, or you can just check us out on BetweenTwoTrains.com. But Jason, I've got some exciting news. As as you see here, we are, for the first episode ever, not in our Shambly Chamber studios. Yeah, we're nomadic, it seems. We, we are, for the first time ever, I'm excited to announce, doing an on-location broadcast wow. here at uh, the the downtown Shambly business of Carrie's Bridal. And with that, I'd like to welcome to the show, Carrie Hewitt from Carrie's Bridal. Hey, Carrie, guys. welcome to the hey, show. Carrie. Thank you. I'm so uh, excited to be here. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, yeah. So Carrie, um, you've been in Shambly now since 2011, 2011 is that right? 2011, yeah. Okay, and so you, uh, we joked before the show, you've got a little monopoly going on here. <laughs> so besides the bridal business, you actually have a couple other businesses right here on Broad Street. I do. So uh, Broad Street Gift, or sorry, Broad Street Mercantile is mine also, um, and um, yeah. So All that's, right. Yeah. All right, so why Shambly? Let's start there. Why Shambly? Wow. So many years ago, I um, ran a company and um, wanted to live in Huntley Hills. And the perfect location to have the business that I was going to work for was downtown Shambly because I knew it was kind of on the up and up. Mm -hmm. And I left that business a long time ago and wanted to stay in the area because my house was in Huntley Hills and uh, this looked like the perfect location. And I had the um, pleasure of renting for a couple of years from uh, the Pachulics. And I found some property over here on Broad Street and purchased that. And uh, that's how we ended up here. So it's just an up and up place. Now, last episode, we interviewed um, a woman that's got a, a, an event space. And she kept talking about the majority of her events are wedding receptions and whatnot. And what was that site she mentioned, Jason? The wed- wedding... Uh putting me on the spot here. Oh yeah, it was it was a website that uh, women go to when they're planning out the and knot. it helps what's it called? The knot maybe? Maybe. I, that might be it. We yeah. may have to go back and I'll listen ask my to it. girlfriend, she'll know. So so <laughs> I, the reason I bring that up is how exactly do you get your customers to I mean you're basically selling them bridal gowns, right? Right. And so at what point do they come to you and say, "Hey, I'm looking for a gown?" So we usually see them after they're engaged. Um, We do sometimes see people that are not engaged. That's totally cool, too. So and we have a really great referral network. So a lot of times people or girls are not engaged yet. And then they are coming in with their friends, maybe that are. And they think of us um, kindly when it's their turn. So gotcha. So the the um, the idea would be that they come to you at what phase during that planning process? You know, are they coming to you really before they schedule 
an event space or, you know, do the other stuff? How early on in the process are they coming to you? Right. So most of the time our customers have already picked out their venue. We look at brides or we see brides usually six to 12 months before their wedding. Mm -hmm. And uh, they typically have picked out their venue because it's easier to find a dress when they have an idea of what their venue is going to look like. Not always. uh, Either way is okay. Some people wait until the last minute and that's all right. We're um, an off the rack store. So it makes it easy. What does that mean? An off the rack store? Yes. Being being, uh, male and I've never (laughs) shopped for dresses. (laughs) Sorry, man. (laughs) What what does that exactly mean? So they can walk in, uh, purchase their gown select their gown purchase their gown and walk out with it same day so they don't have to wait Um, the typical process for a bridal store is to order ahead of time so they need to order at least six to 12 months before their wedding at my store they just come in they purchase it it's just like going to um you know any store where you can buy something and take it out that day now i heard a rumor though you're also a dressmaker is that correct uh we design you design so So you're not actually making it so if someone didn't want to get off the rack from your store what then? Well, so... If Could they, they come to... in and you help them? We actually uh, don't handle that. We do design, but we design specifically for the store. So okay. our alterations um, is in a separate... Is in the building next door. Uh, it's a separate business, but um, she can customize any kind of um, dress. So she can add sleeves or extend trains or customize necklines or back or any of that kind of stuff for our customers. So J- uh, Jason's yeah. riveted here. Yeah. <laughs> I'm taking notes for my future. Okay. <laughs> Jason is not married, so <laughs> if his uh, if his girlfriend's listening, yeah. she probably is. <laughs> um, you know it, what's I think so cool is you're obviously a very good businesswoman beyond this because you own what seems to be most of Broad Street. Uh, yeah. Um, and so, do you see yourself a expanding your business to other places? Um, or B, do you have another street you're looking to take over in Chambly? Oh, well, in Chambly, I don't know. Um, but uh, I do have a location in Macon right now. So Now, oh, why, okay. why Macon? Yeah. So how did you end yeah. up going? Because Chambly was your first Chambly store. was first and Macon was second. We'll think about three later. Um, still, still pondering that one. But yeah, Macon is a really cool smaller market. And uh, I just felt like they had a really big need for a mm-hmm. good solid store. Uh, store down there. Were you getting referrals from south of Atlanta and that's why you said, hey, let's go down that way? Absolutely. We uh, really pull from all over the state and I had looked around Atlanta trying to find a location for another store and the Atlanta market is really saturated. So we just didn't really feel like there was a, a need anywhere nearby for one, but Macon really didn't have a strong store and we felt like it was a good entry into that market. So. Let's let's talk about as an entrepreneur how you made that decision. You know, now you've got a location that's not in your home city. Yes. So, you know, I'm sure you've got some good employees found there. How much do you interact? Do you go down to Macon a lot? You know, what's what's having that second store, what's that like as an entrepreneur? Yeah, that's a great question. So when before we were opening the store, we were down there every day. Uh, My team and I were down there every single day uh, getting it ready for opening. Um, I go down periodically, not much. I have a great manager. She actually started off as an intern in my store here and uh, promoted her. And she wanted to move to Macon. She'd always wanted to live there. And we found a perfect location and jumped right in. I think that it's interesting. You mentioned that it's saturated in Atlanta. And as somebody in real estate, we feel the same way. There's a lot of real estate agents. However, you can be successful when you're the best at your craft and when you differentiate yourself. So in your business, and again, I'm ignorant to the wedding business van, okay, and the dress business. (laughs) Um, How is it that you differentiate yourself in a market like this? Yeah, Jason, you're absolutely right. So I think, yeah, you're right. With, With real estate, with bridal gowns, with anything, you have to create a niche market. And our niche is 1,000 and under. All of our dresses are under $1,000, and we are um, completely off the rack. And we do have a um, good selection of all different sizing. Um, most stores will only carry one or two sizes, or they'll carry very limited right. selection in each size. So our um, creation of a niche market has really helped Uh, propel the business forward because uh, brides know that they can come to us if they need something quickly or if they don't want to hassle with ordering a dress or um, they can't find their size 
or they don't have a huge budget to spend on their dress or they're just um, economical and um, smart and not wanting to spend too much money on something that they're going to wear one time. So would you agree that the more niche you are, the more likely to succeed? Totally. Yes. You really have to carve out your niche because you know, one thing everybody's going to say that they're going to offer great customer service, right? right? No matter what industry you're in, you know, everybody thinks, Oh, great customer yeah. service is my niche. Well, that's everyone's great. Co- you know, that's everyone's niche. You need to find something that appeals to your end user. Right. Exactly. Yeah. That's and, awesome. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. So. so we got the store here in, Shambly, we got the store in Macon, Mm -hmm. and then you decide to open a mercantile. Tell tell us about that business. You know, you you couldn't leave well enough alone. You had to to take on more as an entrepreneur, and I love it. I trust, I love it. It's a you know, I love side hustles. As I tell Jason all the time, what's the side hustle? So how how did that come to be? I think when you're an entrepreneur, you're always looking forward, and you're always thinking about what can I do next. And I always wanted to have a gift store. I don't know why, uh, but I, I did. I, uh, in high school, I worked in a paper goods company and I was so fascinated by, by it. Um, and they were doing really well and I just thought it was a really cool business to be in. And so I think that the carryover between having a gift store and bridal store at the same time is great because, um, you're cross marketing and we have perfect gifts that are just a great carryover from the bridal store into future. We've got gifts for now, for brides, for bridesmaids, for grooms, and then for future for once you have babies or even, you know, just bridal showers, baby gifts, and and beyond, home, everything. So So when when the bride comes in and buys her wedding dress, you'll send them right next door so she can buy, like, bridesmaids gifts, and, I mean, you can... You do some of that? Absolutely. We try to cross market and it, we try to make it easy and painless and seamless for our brides to find what they need without having to go to 200 other places because planning a wedding is a lot of work. It's expensive and our gifts are very affordable and it makes it very easy for them to find things that they like in one location that um, they don't have to go everywhere to, to find stuff. So. All right, so you've been listening to Between Two Trains with Carrie Hewitt from uh, Carrie's Bridal. And um, Carrie, so we've got now, we're going to continue on the progression. We've got the two stores, yep. we've got the mercantile, yeah. and then you said, I'm not done. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So tell us about the, the, you have another business, right, where uh, you actually deal with some wholesale stuff? What, what's do. that about? Oh, yeah. I actually started my wholesale business before the bridal store. So we started off with that and um, we distribute uh, gowns to retail stores across the country, actually across the world. Wow. Now. So, yeah. So we do that. Wedding gowns. Wedding gowns. Yes. Only wedding All gowns. All right. Yes. So this is just strictly a wholesale distribution operation. Right. Yes. All right. And so That's your right. customers are going to be a bridal store in LA or Seattle or wherever. Absolutely. Yes. We attend trade shows and we design our own dresses, have them manufactured. We import them and we um, sell to mom and pop businesses across the country. So always supporting our uh, fellow local stores. So that's what we do. So uh, out of the three businesses then, which is really, I mean, do you have like a feel for percentage wise, which ones bring in in, the biggest revenue out of the three? Uh, it's hard to say, but I probably the bridal store. The uh, bridal store is stores. The two yes, stores are still stores. your bread and butter. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Yeah. So. Well, I think there's a little bit of a connection between us, and I know many Shambly listeners, especially yes. the ones that have been here for many years. Uh, my dad owned Shambly Florist right. in your bridal store. Really cool. Um, he was here in the late seventies to the mid nineties, so. I particularly feel a connection here yeah. because I used to hang out in your store <laughs> and around your store when yeah. I was this tall. Right. <laughs> so um, that's pretty cool yeah, to is. see the building. You find a matchbox car behind the right. building, you know right. it's Jason's. Yeah. Right, exactly. Yeah, or like an action figure that I probably <laughs> forgot. <laughs> Well, we did um, some, find some stuff up in the rafters. I think it was just wallpaper, but uh, I'll, okay. I'll be on the lookout for yeah. the matchbox. That's probably my mom's. <laughs> Maybe, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, that's that's yeah. really cool, Jason. So you were here hanging out in downtown Shambly before hanging yeah. out in downtown Shambly was really cool. Well, <laughs> Shambly went through this kind of, I think, period like a lot of cities uh, or areas of Atlanta in the 80s and 90s where 
um, it was less popularized. So my dad commuted to his business Mm -hmm. from Swanee where we grew up, right? And what I've heard, not only from you, but from a lot of these business owners in Shambly, they live in Shambly Mm -hmm. and operate their businesses here. And I think for many years, that wasn't the case. So it's kind of cool to see Shambly not only as this commercial or industrial center now, it's it's in a community again. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Well, and you know, uh, Carrie and I, we spoke before the show about how this is really a hot area because where sh- you've located these businesses right in what the city is about to create their town center. Yeah. And uh, it, Shambly's already becoming you know, like Jason said, a popular place, but it's going to really be a destination right here, you know, mm-hmm. starting with across the street from your business, there's that big, ugly, vacant lot. I can tell you <laughs> right now, beautiful building on it that everyone wants. <laughs> the, the, the little white yeah. uh, Indiana's. Yeah. Uh, so, um, I can tell you though, the vacant lot is about to get shovels in the dirt. Yes. Uh, the development authority has, approved to move forward with a master plan and so you, right. you're going to see some construction hopefully it won't Good. disrupt too much um, but it will bring mm-hmm. more people to our downtown and hopefully that's good for your business. Yeah. yeah, I think it's great for all of the Shambly businesses. We have such a thriving little market here and there's just such potential for growth and um, you know, I think the wave is coming down from Buckhead to Brookhaven to Shambly mm-hmm. and it's really going to hit hard. And I think it's a really exciting yeah. time for everyone here. So. Well, I, I think, and I've mentioned this before on a previous episode, I think having lived here my whole life, you've seen the exodus out to the suburbs and right. now we're seeing the reverse. People okay. are wanting to come back in. They want to live inside 285. They want to, mm-hmm. you know, the millennials want to be close to mass transit like, yeah you know, Marta. And so we're going to take a short break here to hear from our sponsors. And uh, we will be right back. You're listening to Between Two Trains, a business podcast in the North DeKalb area. Do you want to get on the freight train of social media marketing? Go to www.turnsocialintosales.com. Use the code Chamley to get $100 off to the single best two-day social media boot camp you will ever attend. Are you tired of not getting leads on LinkedIn or Facebook? SEO not working, or figuring out how to get on TV and radio and much more, go to www.turnsocialintosales.com for a two-day boot camp special for Shambly. Use the code Shambly for $100 off. Go to turnsocialintosales.com today. Hey, everyone. It's Jason Wheelock, co-host of Between Two Trains. And I want to invite you to my team, the Wheelock Group at Compass Real Estate, to our end of summer party, the dog days of summer, And you're invited to join us this Saturday, August 18th from 11 to 2 p.m. at Brookhaven Park. Join us for food, ice cream, games, and quite possibly some adult refreshments as we celebrate the end of the season. We're partnering with Canine Caravan Rescue, a local nonprofit which is helping save dogs from being put down at local shelters. And they'll be bringing some local canines out to the park to hang with us and your family. It's totally free, so sign up today on our Facebook page, facebook.com slash wheelocker. And we hope to see you there for some good times and a great cause. Okay, welcome back to Between Two Trains. We have our guest, a Carrie Hewitt from Carrie's Bridal with us. And before we start our hot or not section, Carrie, I want to talk a little bit more about your background and your history. So you actually didn't start in the bridal business, no. you were in IT, right? I was in IT, yes. So that's a long way from from brides. How it did how did we go way. from IT, and what were you doing in IT? Yeah, I was in aerospace, in IT aerospace. I worked for Allied Signal, which got out uh, bought out by Honeywell. I was working uh, in the engines and systems department on the runway in Phoenix, and. Um, I see the fr- Jason. <laughs> I see the first Carrie's bridal on the moon. Right? <laughs> Is that where we're going with this? Well, <laughs> I don't know. It was <laughs> fifty years from now, right? Right. <laughs> it was an interesting job. I'm sorry. Go sure. on. No, I, no. I detract from the conversation. No, so you were working fine. in the aerospace. I was in aerospace, and I hated my job. And um, I was part of a corporate layoff. So Allied Signal got bought by Honeywell. And they waited about a year to do a corporate layoff. And when they did, I was part of the RIF. So 
I had done a little bit of wedding planning for some friends out in Phoenix and uh, had my wedding planning certificate and kind of went down that route. I uh, moved back to Atlanta to be near my family and just on a whim moved up to Chicago because I wasn't really ready to settle back here yet. And when I moved up there, I was looking for a job and that took me to a sales rep position in the bridal industry. So that's how I kind of got cool. started. Okay. Yeah. So, but I have, yeah, I... And what, what year was that? That was... Oh, let's see, 2003, okay. 2004. So. And then you went through winter so, in Chicago. So I then. went through winter in Chicago <laughs> and uh, did not like that in the least bit. So yeah. um, I tailed it back south and I lived in Nashville for about six months. I thought it was an amazing city, but I wanted to be near my family. So I uh, moved back to Atlanta and came back here. Now, were you married at this point? No, I just got married about five years ago. Okay. So, so yeah. you already had the bridal business going. Yeah, it was on the wholesale side at that point okay. and um, didn't start the retail until about six years ago. So, um, but yeah, it was on the wholesale side. I was running another company. I did that for a while and then um, left that company and started my own. I always knew that I wanted to have my own. I just and now and now you have two kids on top of it. I have two kids. So Jason, yes. we have a woman entrepreneur here, which always <laughs> impresses me to start with. You know, we've had this conversation <laughs> yeah. about Shambly's women entrepreneurs running Three different businesses <laughs> with two kids, young kids at home, right? Yeah, I have a, incredible. An almost four month old and a sixteen month. I mean, that, that four, just, almost four year old and a sixteen month. That's old. just. Yeah. It, I applaud you. I don't <laughs> know how you do it. Thanks. I love the the spirit of the entrepreneurial that she can say, hey, you know, even having the family, I can still run these three businesses. We have no, we have no room to complain, Van, uh, about uh, priorities, right? No, <laughs> not at all. Well, Carrie, we're going to play a game that we okay. like to play on the show called Hot or Not, right. where we are going to tell you a phrase, a statement, a word, and we want to know, as an entrepreneur, whether you think this is a hot thing to do or not such a hot thing to do. I really like this one at the top because I'm always debating this, and it's whether to buy, whether it's better to hire industry experience uh, or fresh motivated talent. Ooh, hot or not in a sense. Well, right? you mentioned you mentioned <laughs> that you your manager at uh, in Macon is was an intern here, right? She was an so intern. she was not. You didn't hire for the Macon store. You you got, you know. Right. She grew with us and uh, and became a manager within a less than a year so so yeah. does that to jason hot or not does that make fresh motivated talent hot I, that's i mean yeah that's pretty hot yeah she yeah and then i have i mean really we've done both routes i wouldn't even say that we've done one or the other um we've taken some really super motivated people and made them uh superstar bridal people and this is like to me such an ambiguous question. I think it's so situational, yeah. right? Because they can have their pros and cons. It's true. You know? Yeah, that one's tough. <laughs> um, I like new and fresh young talent because yeah. you can kind of mold them, mold them right. in your image of yeah, how you want true. things done. Yeah, the the problem is though, and I'm not saying one way or the other. Dan, um, you're fresh young talent. Don't <laughs> <worry>. Okay. <laughs> the, the the problem is though that with fresh young talent, you have to spend a lot of time training gain them because they don't already know. And mm -hmm. so when you have experienced industry people, you know, you can sort of throw them into a situation and say, this is what I want you to do. And yeah. they won't need a lot of hand holding. in my That's business. True. It's tough. I've gone through some assistance where it's, it's tough. If they don't know, I spend a lot more of my time. Fan loves being devil's advocate. Yeah. 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 Right. <laughs> All right. So hot or not a five-year business plan. Well, I think that that is a hot. Uh, I don't personally do that, though. Okay. Um, I. You think it's hot, but she doesn't do it. Though. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. Okay. Um, I have a business plan. Um, I I know that you do a business plan every year because yeah. you told me that pre uh, pre segment. I um, I think it's a good idea to plan. I am not a planner. I like to. Um, you shoot for the hip. Uh, yeah, I am. I'm, I'm like that. I like to kind of go where I feel is what's important in the market and what the market needs. So yeah. I can't always pre-plan that. And so, yeah, it's hot. It's a good idea. It's, hot. it's not me, though. <laughs> <laughs> I won't lie. <laughs> all right. Well, what about so uh, now your husband, he doesn't help with the business at all? No. Jason, um, Jason loves this hot or not. We ask it almost every time. Yeah. And that's um, marrying an entrepreneur. 
Yes. So is it hot to marry an entrepreneur or not? I think so. But is um, he an entrepreneur? Or was he my doing? husband is. Yes, okay. he owns a motorcycle shop over in Doraville. Oh wow. Right, so... Wait um, a second now. I yeah. see a future uh, wow. Between Two Trains episode. Yeah, so he uh, he does. He owns a motorcycle shop. Um, yeah, I think that now, is... Now, did he, he own that before y'all got married? Yes. Okay. Yes. So you knew, I'm going into a relationship with an entrepreneur, and he knew he was going into a relationship with an entrepreneur. Yes, I would say the only drawback is that you've got two A-types, you know? Exactly. That's what entrepreneurs are. Right. <laughs> Nobody but... wants to sit in the passenger seat. Right? <laughs> no, that's true. <laughs> However, I find that is something that's really attractive about somebody. Um, yeah. But I grew up in a household. My dad owns his own business. So uh, that was always what I was looking, looking at. Um, yeah. So I... Yeah. Plus, you're in a different business, so you don't have to clash every day, too. Completely. Grease versus pretty white dresses. Totally. Yeah. Different, so. <laughs> Unless that's your wedding theme. Yeah. Right? <laughs> it is or some, yeah. Now, what about um, equity partners? So, you know, I deal with a lot of business owners. You know, some of them, they're just by themselves. They got full funding. They don't need any equity. Is, you know, bringing on an equity pot partner excuse me an equity partner a hot thing or not such a hot thing um that i think that's very situational i think that depends on what your needs are for your uh financial background and what you've got to bring to the table um some people can definitely do that now you don't I, have any partners I in your not, business no i do not um that is not for me personally um but yeah i mean so when like, we open Carrie's Bridal 3 uh, <laughs> in Asheville, North Carolina. 3.0. No, how, franchising might be a different story. Okay. But equity partners, uh, not for me. You, you would so, do it on your own? I would do it on my own. Yeah. So how would you get that financing? Do you get a small business loan? Do you have family you know, backing? All of the above, okay. I would say. Yeah, I mean, if I needed it. it but um, I try to operate on my own. I don't have debt. So um, I you know, try to do everything on my own. Excellent. So, well, I, what do you think? Should I do one more? We one, got one time, more. Man? Yeah, uh, we got we got enough time for one more. <sighs> what about? Um, is the customer always right? Ooh. Let's have a little more fun Ooh, here. That is a good in one. America. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> that's a good question. Uh, is the customer always right? Um, that's not really a hot or not. So, uh, yeah. but I'll still <laughs> answer the question. Um, no, I don't think the customer is always right, and I'm a customer. So, um, is the customer at my business always right? Uh, yes, we try to be a yes company and we try to make sure our customers are well taken care of. Um, but I am a customer of other businesses. So am I always right? No. Uh, I don't think that a company has to side with one customer if they're in the wrong, if the customer's in the wrong, because it just ends up costing, costing the customer, I'm um, costing the business money where, Maybe they're not. Well, before we go, one last thing. It's not a hot or not, but you had mentioned earlier in the show about, you know, your business really comes from a lot of referrals, word of yes. mouth, stuff like that. Yes. Well, from a mar I'm, I'm a big marketer. I love <laughs> marketing. I love branding. Yep. I talk all day long about how we can brand a business or brand a, a shambly into the way we want. What besides referrals are you doing to market and brand yourself uh, do you do you know social media stuff online stuff trade shows are there i mean are there trade shows in the i'm assuming in the bridal business yeah so for the bridal store uh we actually do um bridal shows okay and we do those um a couple times a year so and then we have a billboard that rotates around so we enjoy that a lot um it's always fun okay. when somebody old says school to you. marketing <laughs> yeah billboards. yeah it's a digital one so it's uh okay. it's, in, it's a future kind which is really cool but okay. I, I like billboards i think they're high visibility yeah. it's really cool um and our yeah our word of mouth referral business is, is still huge. the biggest yeah we've tried a lot of different avenues for advertising um the billboard and our referral business um, are really the strongest ones. We do a ton of social media. Um, you know, our customers are millennials and mm -hmm. primarily, uh, and that's that's focusing right on um, you know what they are in tune with. So, do you ever yeah. get repeat customers? Is that a bad question to ask? You've actually had. <laughs> we have. Yeah. Third and fourth time. Uh, uh, yeah. you know, I don't know. Well. <laughs> I've been uh, married no for 21 judgment. years, so I don't know. <laughs> 
Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, sometimes people come back for a rehearsal dress or if they come back for a second dress, it's not always in the best circumstances. It may be a reason that they're coming back for a second one. It's so. for a friend, but I'm going to try it on for that. Them, right? <laughs> yeah. So um, or maybe they lost their spouse or yeah. something the first time around, right. which, um, you know, but yeah, we do get re- repeat business. And um, it's great to see people again, whether it's. Uh, you know, for their second dress or whether it's um, because they're they're coming back as a bride and they come originally as a guest. So that's always fun. And I love seeing the brides that I saw when we first opened. That's well, if one of our if one of our listeners wants to come get a wedding dress, what where should they go? Tell us the address. What what should they do? Go to your website, Mm -hmm. call you up or what? Yeah. So our website is Mm carriesbridalcollection.com. And um, we are over here on Broad Street, 3524 Broad Street. You're welcome to walk in during the week. We are by appointment on the weekends. Um, and yeah, we're high awesome. right here on Broad Street. Well, Carrie, thank you so much oh, for coming on the show. Uh, Jason, you yeah. have some parting words for us? I want to just, you know, I know that we have a little ad for Saturday for my team's event, but I want to do a quick plug and you're definitely invited to Carrie. Thanks. Um, thank you. We're doing... Uh, the dog days of summer and uh, as you heard in our spot it's a great way for us to connect with the people we've done business or that we haven't met locally in DeKalb County Um, but more importantly it's to really benefit a great nonprofit canine caravan rescue that's based here in DeKalb and so if you love dogs we have some great do- like rescue dogs out at the park. It's going to be very family friendly. And a portion of all new and repeat business that my team receives this month is going to go back to Canine Caravan Rescue. That's awesome. That and so great. I want to make sure folks were aware of that, that um, we really want to make a nice contribution to what they're doing in DeKalb. So. Well, thank you, Jason, for being a co-host again. I hope you will come back to co-host some other shows. And uh, you've been listening to Between Two Trains. You can check us out on Stitcher or any other of the great podcasting sources or just go to BetweenTwoTrains.com. That's Between the Number Two Trains.com. Thanks for listening. And now, Between Two Trains. (laughs) <laughs> I was like, and now between two trains. And my mouth was right here. Between two trains. I was like, and now between two trains. And then pull away. Yeah,